coming up on this episode of Free Lunch. My first two years on Wall Street, I spent every dime. My, my wife found, found me divorced living in my mama's basement with three kids. No, no, no. Money never sleeps. Sleepers never make money. I remember clapping and being excited the two-mile walk home the day I got fired. Right before Wall Street. What? I had a five-year time frame limit as to when I was getting out because everybody would look around and see they've been for 30 years and two years after they leave, they die. But, but that's, what they, that's what I mean. It, to them, mm -hmm. it, it's better. It's more comfortable. I'll stay with not enough, not having enough mm -hmm. because it's familiar right. versus, versus leaping towards what could be far beyond my wildest dreams, but it's unfamiliar. It's Free Lunch Season 3 with a special thanks to our sponsors, Bullseye-LLC.com, Ready, Aim, Bullseye, where safety is our ammo, Gen1LLC.info, Generation 1 Logistics, taking pride in putting our carriers first and helping owner-operators get premium loads, stay organized, and increase profit, and ScarletOakCandleCo.com, the self-care experts. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Freestyle Gospel, a.k.a. The Real Free with another episode of Free Lunch. And I got my man, Mike Stroud, in the building. Give it up for him, y'all. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. My man, Mike. What's going on, Mike? Oh, uh, you know something? We're just working, moving, shaking, trying to be better. Moving and shaking. Yeah, you know how I'll be summing across those those individuals, guys. This is, this is another one of those stumbles from a, another guest we've had on the show connecting me with Mike. Um, he, he's, he's a workhorse like me guys. So, so, you know, I gotta, I gotta have other workhorses on the show. You know, you gotta surround yourself around those like-minded people so you can pick their brain about the stuff that kind of you're trying to journey through. They probably, they probably got the insight, some tips too. So well, I got we're going to pick his, we're going to pick his brain a bit. We're going to see, work. see what Mike got for us today on free lunch. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what has today, let's just start with that, man. What's today been like? Well, today's been busy. I've been having a five-month-old kicking my butt all day today, so. Yeah, yeah, I got a four-year-old, yeah. she does the same to me. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it terrible at four? You know how to say terrible twos. Is it a terrible four? Is that a thing for well, four-year-olds? Well, you know something? I think she's a terrible 13 at four. <laughs> <laughs> a terrible 13 at four. I could, I, could, I could see that, yes. I got the mm -hmm. five. This, this five-month-old, she's not, I don't know what's supposed to be, like, the textbook standard of when babies are supposed to be you know, start walking. Mm -hmm. But at five months, this baby can stand up straight, holding on to the crib edge by herself. Wow. That's she, amazing. She can't move a foot yet. She's not there. She's still yeah. like net balancing. She got her daddy big head. Okay. But <laughs> she like her leg strength mm -hmm. is insane at five months. Wow, that's crazy. You know? So I'm like, I have to like, I don't know, Google that. It's like, what's the, the record for that? Well, you know how you say when you get older, Everybody gets it at different times. She's just getting that early. She is killing it. I need her. You know, I, I, I'd appreciate if she could get speaking early because trying to decipher the, the screams and different inflections and the hollering okay. is, is a big, is a big gut wrenching. Well, maybe like, she's speaking you know, and you just not understand it. No, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> but in their, in their baby talk, speaking is just only yelling. It's hollering. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's their language. Uh, four year old. No, yeah, I could appreciate it when the, when she gets to four because she she could talk to me. Hopefully, she could she could talk she might a lot. Talking, she might be talking. Oh, well, more. she might be at the rate she's going. She might be Mike. She might be possibility. So Mike, uh, I the 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 gentleman that connected us that introduced us, my good friend Eddie Daniels. Yeah, love that guy. Um, love that guy. he was <clears> telling me. Uh, he was telling me about several projects that he's working on. He's, he's, he works with a bunch of different clients, whether it's photography and like videography and all this stuff. So he's telling me about uh, Mike here, guys. And he's like, dude, this is somebody you want to meet. Like not 
when like you know how people be saying no you got to connect and network with this person he's like no 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 i'm talking about like no seriously like you got to connect. mind you he's telling me this eddie's trying to tell me about mike while i'm in the middle of daddy daycare too yeah. so i'm like juggling a, a million things and i'm like he's like yeah so i'm getting your number i'm gonna have a reach out to you oh well, i'm gonna get back to you but you know what i might not get back to you so he probably gonna actually be the one to get back to you i'm like all right all right all right all right just give, give him a number you know whatever and then like here we are today so before I actually touched about what you actually do right. today, what I, when we kind of talked before the show, I got some like pieces of like a little bit of nuggets about, you know, kind of your background and stuff. And I'm always shocked to like, not shocked, but I love when I meet other people who have a very varied, interesting background, like a collection of a, a bunch of different hats, oh, yeah. just like I do. Because I, for a while, I was the only one like that across the people I meet. Like, right. you know, people were always taken back by the fact that I had all these former hats and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when somebody else I'm able to kind of connect with who can relate to me, I'm excited about that conversation. Yeah. That's a word. So some of the things that you, I remember you mentioning is you were a former broker. Like you like worked with yeah. Wall, like on Wall yeah, Street, like yeah. into like that kind of stuff. What what's that like? Is it like what we see on TV, like those like Wall Street movies and stuff, where is everything hectic every day, like this hustle bustle, a million miles an hour kind of industry? Well, well it, it kind of goes back and forth, but yes, absolutely, it's hectic every single day, every single hour. How so? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, well, you know, as soon as you come in, you're on. You know, your time is not yours. You're a slave to the market. It's <laughs> time not, is not yours. yours. So there's no like, I have my own schedule type no. of thing. No. No, no, no. Money never sleeps. Sleepers never make money. <laughs> money? Hold on. You got to run that back. Say it again. <laughs> money never sleeps. Sleepers never make money. Sleepers, money never sleeps. Sleepers never make money. That's a t-shirt. Yeah, I'm going to have to get that on the t-shirt. Yeah, let's 50-50. 50. -50. <laughs> Mike said, look, that's hilarious. I'm usually going to slip that by most guests on the show. Like, Mike yeah. caught that. He said, not 50-50. 50-50. All right. Okay. So, okay. So it's 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 legit. That part's correct. Yeah, yeah. It, it's well, a lot of the movies they fudge some stuff, you know. But ironically, some movies there's a lot they of the same yeah, yeah, lines yeah. that you used to be able to use, which you can't do anymore. What's what's the stuff that's that's most that we see on TV that that is kind of fake or exaggerated? Well, it depends saying? on the type of firm you're in. You can be at a at a, at a major, you know, yeah. or or a mid tier. Um, for example, you're at a. I'm not gonna call a name, but one of the big ones that everybody yep. knows. Okay, mm -hmm. um, isn't it like a like a, a big three or a big five? Yeah, what is it? yeah, yeah. You know, so you, it takes you a lot longer to make the money that they say you can make on Wall Street. Street. Okay, yeah. on a big firm. Yes, but you're in the middle firm. Guess what? If you can sell, if you believe in what you're doing, if you put yeah. the time in, yeah, you, you, you're on a fast track. You know? Yeah. So most people. From where I'm from, where, you know, most of the, let's say, uh, ethnic people in this country yep. are from, look, it's either sink or swim. You know, I mean, you got yeah. to go earn your daily bread. If you got that hustle mentality and you turn it the right way, yeah, yeah, you can do well, some I'm, things. Hey, you, you know, can do some we things. were just saying, man, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Absolutely. You stay yes. ready. You ain't never got to get ready. Amen to that. Amen to that. Shout out to Ray Barnes. <laughs> I stole that from my man Ray Barnes. There you go. Hey, I don't know you, Ray, but my man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So besides uh, just some of your former like hats, what are some of the other previous things you've done over the years, man? Just coming up as a young man, getting to that. Like, wow. how did you even like? How did you even segue into Wall Street? Wow. Like, did you go to school for that? Like, oh, actually, college? actually, um, I worked in a steel mill for five years. Before, After right college, before the right before Wall Street, what I had a five year time frame limit as to when I was getting out because everybody would look around and see they've been for 30 years, and two years after they leave, they die because you're just breathing in all this wow. toxic air and there's no opportunities. So, I made mm. a pact to myself the day I went to this job that I'm five years and I'm out no matter exactly. what level I'm on. Guess what. At five years, they just so happened to be laying people off. Wow! You know, I got laid off. So you, you so you had a plan going in oh, from the jump. Absolutely, like this is not. And I think that's a that's an excellent point to just for, for people listening. I think a lot of people in whatever respective you know jobs they're in, you know, they're there because 
hey, at the time you just needed a job, you need to be making money, right? Absolutely. It's not the thing that you're necessarily passionate about. Um, but I think many people find themselves in a position where at that job, they wake up one day, 20 years later, and they're still there. Absolutely. They happen to a lot. Not happy. People. Not Yeah. And I and, and I think one of the major reasons is because they, they wake up every day without a plan. True. Not just punching at the job without without a plan, mm -hmm. but just from the moment they wake up. They, they wake up and arrive at life each day with no mm -hmm. plan for their life. So let alone the job they're going to, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's that's... For many of us to get kind of in that pocket, finally, in the space, the thing that we're passionate about, for many of us, like myself, that's part of my my testimony, is that um, it's almost like God had to, like, hoodwink you into it. Like, True. You know, or, or, or a tribulation had to force you out of that spot. That's how you an ended up where you are, you that, know? That's exactly what happened. So for me, you know, I had to, you know, I remember... I was 19 years old. I was working at a local hospital um, where people literally work for 30, 40, 50 years, never leave. Uh, I ended up getting fired. Wow. I ended up getting fired shortly after a year working there. And I told myself, I remember, I remember clapping and being excited the two-mile walk home the day I got fired, because at some point in the walk, my sadness turned to revelation and I caught that had I not got fired, I would have been another one of these people. Absolutely. Still here 20 years later. Absolutely. Because for a teenager, it was great money, mm -hmm. but it wasn't my passion and it, and, and it had a cap, you know, there, right. there was nowhere to, you know, for me to flourish and thrive there in that spot, what I was doing. Right. You know, so yeah, man. Tri tribulation is is many a times the 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 catalyst mm -hmm. for us all. This but guy, for you, you you were you were they was they was giving out pink slips anyway, right on time, absolutely. scheduled for you. And I was like, ooh ooh ooh, I'll take one. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to be there. Yes, man. May I have another? <laughs> it was so bad that when I was off, the days I was off of that job, I wouldn't even drive down that street. Oh wow. Working in the steel mill. Oh yeah, that's wow. one of those things. You said, look, you said, look, I ate this place with a passion. I don't oh, yeah. even want to drive nowhere down that way. Oh yeah, yeah, man. On a days off. I love not liking that place. <laughs> I love, if that I makes loved sense. I love not liking that place. Anybody else has a job out there that they love <laughs> not liking their job? It's time to change it up. <laughs> it's time to change it up, man. But that, yo, yeah. I mean, and then for some of us that we're changing it up because, or we're we're driven to something different or something else because of, you know, our our family dynamic back at home. You know, you know, you you start off maybe working at a place, McDonald's is sufficient because it's just you, right. and then you mess around. Now you got a kid, and now, you know, that's the thing, the catalyst right. that takes you from you know just being satisfied and complacent where you are, and right. says I gotta go, I gotta go find something else. Right, you need something substantial. Because yeah, that's actually why I took the job in the steel mill. I had to take care of my son. So what, what was it that gave you the mindset to say, I can't, I can't be here for more than five years? Like, like what, what was up? What's up with that? Like, what was the? Because, I knew, within me, what I really wanted to do. Like when I oh, was, you had that already. Oh, yeah. I had it when I was seven years old. Really? Yeah, because when I was seven years old, I looked around and said, I don't know what I want to do, but it's not this. What my family was doing and the environment I was in, Yeah. I said, it's not this. What what kind of, what were your family members, like, what oh. industries were they in? Oh, that time? Uh, you old, and it was in the 70s. I'm older than you. Yeah. In the 70s, you know? It was welfare. <laughs> oh, man. It was welfare, yeah. and it was breaking up the family. Yeah, yeah. Things of that nature, and you know, there was a lot of alcohol back then, and just no opportunities, you know. Mm. And I said, "How can I get up out of this place?" Ironically, we're watching the Buffalo Bills with O.J. Simpson of all people. <laughs> Look, uh -huh. and my pop said, "Wow, they make a lot of money doing that." You know, we had the the bunny rabbit ears. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you had someone had to hold it with the electrical charge uh -huh. going in. So you could get the straight picture. Yep. Okay, yeah, that was us. Okay. Okay. So my sister's turn was to hold it. 
<laughs> my sister was dead. holding it. So the picture wasn't clear. Dead right now. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was my sister's <laughs> turn. I'm done. You know, so okay. um, I realized that, wow, that's my way out. Now, mind you, I was playing Pop Warner D Squad. I was the worst kid in the league. I used to jump on the pile during the game after they blew the whistle. That's how <laughs> Bad I was. I had no purpose there. I was just oh, doing it because everybody else was doing it, right? Okay. So one, two days after that, I started working. Two days after I found out that this was my way, I started working. So I was. So, like, so at seven years old, that was the dream. For that you. was it. I'm going to be a football player. That was it. That was it. I knew I had to get up out of where I was. So I found out that mm, most football players, they go to college back then. There was no right to the league back then. Nah, nah. Right? So, mind you, so I'm in fourth grade, you know, two years later, and I'm getting crazy bad grades. And I realized I had to go to college. Mm -hmm. Instantaneously, I was on the honor roll. Because wow. Just because I, you realized I had to get this up. is the barrier between me and what I want to get to. Absolutely. There was no sway in me. Zero. I love that. You know, so I okay. became one of the best kids in the league. You know, and uh and, 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 and the pop league? Oh yeah. The pop Warner? Oh yeah, I was an all star. Okay. I was an all star. So how, how far did you take this thing? Uh we actually went to college. I was actually going pro and I got hurt. What what college did you go to? I actually went to the military first. Mm -hmm. And that's another story we can get yep. into reason I went to the military. But um when I got out, I had uh twenty five D ones recruiting me out of San Diego City College. What's up? They go Okay. All right. And uh then I got hurt wow. hurt my knee. You know, um, I was in, Dang. A, and I went, to, but I had an academic scholarship, which the grades were always good. So I had an academic scholarship to Bethany College in West Virginia. Four days after I got there, Detroit Lions came to see me. I was wow. what, mm, sophomore. I was a sophomore in college. Detroit Lions came to see me. I took the NFL test. Most people don't know there's a written test that the NFL has as well. Really? You gotta understand I, the I didn't playbook. Know that. Well, I mean, well, I figured the playbook was really mostly pictures and drawings, you know, a bunch of X, zeros, and yeah, probably, a couple of things probably like that. diagrams of little men. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I wasn't a high draft. You know, if you're like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, Herschel Walker, or all these <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, you're going to the yeah, league, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Small school. You got you to learn to okay. think, you know? And uh, 40 yard dash. So it's a written test. Stuff. Yeah, there's a written How test. How long? Big test? Uh, it's kind of like the ASVAB or like, okay. you know, it's like yeah, 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 college yeah. boards, basically. Shorter version. But you, did, you did good? Yeah, I did. Obviously, yeah. If I remember correctly, I did. Yeah. Decent. You know, I did. I mean, honor roll student, academic scholarship. I'd imagine you did good. I did. I did okay. Okay. I um, but I got hurt during the season again. So God said that this is not for you. Nah. But also, you remember a guy called Ivan Boski? That name sounds familiar. That rings a bell. All right. Well, you know Martha Stewart, right? Yes. All right. The only connection they have is they tried, they convicted Martha Stewart of insider trading, right? Mm hmm. Well, Ivan Boski, he was the first "quote unquote" Ponzi scheme insider training issue in America. Okay, I followed that. It intrigued me so much; I had never heard anything about it. And that's how I learned about Wall Street. Oh, so okay. Then, so you just followed, went down the rabbit hole. That was like 10, 12 years old. Wow! So I knew I wanted to be on Wall Street at ten, twelve years old. As assuming. The, the football thing didn't work. Because no, 10, no, 12, no. you're still chasing the football thing. No, no, I had to do that, but I know people get hurt. Oh, so you, at 10, 12, you was already coming up with contingency plans? Absolutely. Oh, my God. Who, who taught you this? What I don't is, know. Was this something God put in me? I have no idea. But there's no 10-year-old thinking of a backup plan at 10, man. You'd be surprised at these kids nowadays. Ten year, look, at these look, kids, at, look, look at your daughter. Nowadays, 10-year-olds, their plan is just to be TikTok famous. That's their plan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to have a YouTube channel where they're playing video games. Well, we didn't have the internet back then. No, you, you know? did not. We had none of that stuff, you know. So it was like it was it was grind, you know. Wow. Earn your daily bread. I mean, Dude said ten years old. I already had the backup plan. Stop man. playing with your boy. Yeah. So check this out. It was football. Got to go to college, right? Uh huh. Then the NFL. Yeah. Then Wall Street, but then. Wall Street, I found out real wealth is in concrete. So my guys on Wall Street taught me that you got to get into real estate, which is actually what I do now. Oh, you, the Wall Street dudes taught you that. Yeah. Okay. So so I learned it out. So there. all the so all the big 
the the, the big guys in, uh, on Wall Street, they're, they're really actually into that concrete. Oh, a lot of them, yeah. A lot of them own it. Yeah. I have one guy that he was my mentor, Tom who Kelly. Own, who owns that? Because, uh, like, Wall Street is an actual street, right? There is an actual street, but it's a district. It's oh, a district, okay. You know, so there is actual Wall Street, absolutely. Okay. Is the is the property like so? Where they like on TV? They show mm -hmm. that uh, where people ring the bell thing. That's the exchange. That yes. place is on Wall Street. The actual yes. Wall Street. It actually is. Right? Yes. Okay. That building is that building like a government building or is it owned by like a actual like non government? To be speaking, Private. I don't know about that particular building. I'm not gonna look that up. Yeah, it was very. Somebody tell me in the comments if you guys, you know, if you're listening, if you guys know that. That's yeah. ironic. Been on Wall Street, do real estate. I don't know that question. Yeah. You learn something new every day. <laughs> or you learn a new question a every new question. day. Aha. Sometimes you're not asking the right questions. You gotta ask the right questions. So what was so I'm mean, what was your first job ever? Wow, my first job that, that ever. you got a paycheck from. York Steakhouse. I was a bus boy. York <laughs> How old were you your first job? Thirteen. Really? Yep. Fudged my paper. That was a Oh man. That's awesome. Fudged the paperwork. Were you were you good with your money at thirteen? Absolutely. Oh yeah. I mean, you got to be at ten. You already got backup contingency. Well, I'm like this. This is the guy. This is the kid that was bringing a briefcase to school. Well, actually, <laughs> oh god, he's about to actually, tell me. I, I did one day. Me. I was in ninth grade. I did one day. <laughs> First day at ninth grade, I had a suit. Yeah, I worked. You got a tie, you guys, skinny tie. You guys see how sharp this guy is. Well, you know, for those who are seeing the, the video, look, this guy is sharp. Oh uh, well, you know, I just, I don't know. I follow people. Love it, love it. Follow people. You so know. your first job was the steakhouse? Yeah, steakhouse busboy. We were so poor that I, I actually, it's kind of shameful, but look, I was poor back then. Hey, The no steak that here. people didn't eat, we used to cut the part they ate off and eat that because I was so hungry. Mm. True story. Mm. And when you- It wasn't when, hygienic, but- No, I mean, but- what in at all, if any way, does the does a memory like that impact the present man you are today, or or does or does it not at it all? It absolutely does. I always. What remember, does that do for you? I always remember where I come from. I always remember how hard it was in the beginning, and always reach back to help people that want to be helped all the time. Stu, cutting the piece off, the untouched piece for yourself man that's those are those those are those humbling that's why i say i mean it, it's it's oftentimes part of people's why in life the drive that they have is memories like that i have you know before taking this leap you know and and betting 100 percent on myself you know as a as a creative as a content creator full time i can remember i was just telling my wife recently I can remember I was working at a charter school in the daytime and I was an Uber driver by night. Um, not during the week, uh, but on the weekend, because right. during the week I had to, you know, I'm a husband, dad, you know, I'm helping my kids with homework in the afternoon. Occasionally, you know, my, my wife would let me go out, you know, on a weekday, you know, for a couple hours and make a little, a few bucks trying to make ends meet. And, um, but on the weekends I, I wore, a, you know, my, uh, Charter School Academy blazer, you know, has the logo, you know, button up shirt, right. slacks. And I would leave home Friday morning to go to work in that outfit. And then my wife would see me, I would return home Sunday in the same clothes. Wow. Ubering all weekend from all throughout Connecticut, across the border line into New York. And, um, now when we travel places or go anywhere along those those routes, I can remember the memories like hit me like a ton of bricks of the the little rest stop gas stations where I can remember being parked mm -hmm. um, at key places, you know, trying to find a, a spot that had a good spotlight or a, a well-lit area to park my car and recline the seat back and, and nap for a couple hours. How did you get that hustle? That, that's real grind hustle. But that's that's from my, my biggest mm -hmm. why out of, you know, during moments like that, those evenings have always been my, my family because probably not to the degree as you or who knows, you know, I, I grew up 
um, to teenage parents being, you know, raised for a long time by my grandparents while they're also raising their kids. Like, so me and my uncles kind of were raised like siblings. Right, right. So, you know, I, you know, I got my grandma. She's on welfare. She's getting food stamps, limited food stamps. And she's trying to provide for five boys in the house and two grandkids. That's me, tough. You know what I mean? So there was, you know, days where it was, wasn't much to go around for us either. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, came time for school or having school clothes. You know what I mean? I had five other uncles to, to get clothes handed down, you right, know, to right. me. so, you know, not wanting that for my family, my kids, you know, going forward. And then my wife, you know, having a wife that, uh, my, my wife, if I'm not careful, I might mess around and choke up. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna let you, I'm not gonna let you catch me like that, Mike. Um, my, my wife found, found me divorced living in my mama's basement with three kids. Wow. Um, and this past couple of weeks, we just celebrated our six year anniversary. Congratulations. Um, that's, that's amazing. But, uh, yeah, I, I, if, if, if the kids already that I have, obviously, which is a wealth of enough drive, didn't do it for me. Having that, that wife by my side, watching me bet on myself, take this leap, being a full-time content creator, watching me through all the like, losses the dips the downs rejections stumbling trying to you know make a revenue out of this business you know this being all you do um mm, yeah i hear you that'll hear that'll, you, that'll, that'll that'll do it that'll that'll, <clears throat> you that'll know keep what they say you know a uh, strong king can't be that unless you got a stronger queen which is being to another because you you're also married absolutely absolutely in 13 years and i better Watch what I say, too. She might beat me up. No, nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> but always awesome, man. She put it with me through a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. And you know something? Look, it's one of the reasons I'm still here. Absolutely. Beautiful thing. You know, it's one Beautiful of the reasons thing. my business runs the way it does and it keeps me on my toes. You know, so I thought about this before. Remember that movie on Any Given Sunday? Yes. Cap got hurt. Uh -huh. Quarterback got hurt. She says, what are you doing? You're the quarterback out of Miami, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. You know? That's my wife. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Similar wife. Yeah. Similar. I, I remember uh going to this um I had this this uh rap battle event when I used to rap battle uh in California. So I had the flight booked to California from Connecticut and um I remember not being prepared. Uh, we had so many family just fires mm. igniting al along the weeks preceding the event right, right. that I would normally be getting locked in and rehearsing, you know, my rounds and all that. So I wasn't prepared. And uh, I remember having on my lap in the airport um, napkins that I got from the, the stewardess and mm. customer service desk writing yeah. my rounds yeah. on, the, on the napkins it just i was just panicking i'm just like i just i'm not gonna be ready um and i remember called talking to my wife and her just saying look if there's anybody that could do it it's you isn't that amazing and just hearing her say those words man just put that battery in my back yeah that that's that's the rap it's a rap after this <clears throat> look Look, whoever whoever's standing standing in front of me in my way after after I get that after look, I get look, that cosign they're not there no more that cosign right there oh what's <laughs> yeah. no. what well, it, it, it reminds me of that scene in uh, the Spartan movie three hundred where oh yeah right yeah, before yeah. he kicked the guy yeah, in the leg yeah. and look at his wife she give him the, she, she give him like, the look like, like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah so so you ended up so you end up in Wall Street and then you find out from the Wall Street guys where you think stock market and putting your money in all these other things you think that's the it mm -hmm. that's where you actually find out real yeah. estate real concrete estate. that's where it really is at that's where it's at that's where, that's it's, where at. it's at you know they're not making and any more and how long you been doing that now real estate wow going on 18 years 18 years yeah 18 okay. years you know has it changed a lot from when you got into now? Oh, yeah, the game I mean, pandemic aside. The yeah, pandemic yeah. is making everything change. Yeah, this is just a different Prior to market. the pandemic. Absolutely. It was already widely changed from when you started? Absolutely. And I think it's like that with everything, you know? Because, for example, 
we as people need to evolve, okay? Because you're not mm. evolving, you're dying. You're not moving forward, okay? okay? And the game changes. For example, rap. You just talking mm -hmm. about rap. The rap game now is different than it was 20 years ago. Yeah, it's trash now. You know? Yeah. It's totally different content, <laughs> totally different technique, <laughs> you know? Um, a lot of, let's say, different types that um, don't get the respect of the older, you know, um, forefathers. Yes. You know? Facts. Um, but the ones that they believe in, they believe in. Yeah. For good reason, you know? Yeah. They're putting the work in. Yes. And they're taking that mold and they're breaking yes. it. They're not, you know, melting it. Yes. It's Shout out to my man, Dayton. <laughs> Shout out to my man, Lecrae. Kendrick. Okay. Yeah, it's some, some 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 lyricists still out there, man. Yeah, Kendrick do his thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I Lecrae, yeah, I, I heard yeah, him the other yeah, day. Yeah. Believe it or not, I don't really listen to a whole lot of music anymore. Yeah, and I don't watch TV because mm -hmm. I'm busy thinking about you know how to move forward and how to help as many people as I can yeah. in real estate. You know, um, facts, facts. But yeah, yeah. If you so say you, certain names, I'm I'm on it. So the so the the. Transition. So, how was the transition from Wall Street where you in into real estate? What was that? now? I hope mm -hmm. that wasn't as abrupt, like via pink slips and stuff, like the still no. still mill job was. Like, like so, how did you get do that leap? Well, this is what happened. <laughs> what happened was what had happened was. So when people start, <laughs> what, what had happened was well, uh, it's um, usually suspect. It's usually yeah, 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 yeah. No, okay, but but how I actually became involved in in real estate was I got burnt out on Wall Street. Oh, because they, they was working Look, working your hind. I got burnt out. They was working your hind. We was doing it actually prepared me for real estate because I was doing like 18 hours a day. About 18 hours oh, a day. Wow. Sleeping about two hours a day for let's say six to eight weeks and then crashing for a week. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, I was doing. Three. Was it pay, was it paying off at least? Oh yeah, pay, was paying. Pay? Oh okay, all right. Paying, all right, now. All right. I was paying more than I weigh. Okay, it was paying. All right, praise God. But, so what? But, but look, was it worth it? We trying to work smarter, not not hard. Yeah. We're not trying to die. Well, we need to work hard. Continue to work hard. We need to work hard. But smarter, yes. Um, the experience and the knowledge I gained out of it was way more profitable than any type of money I could have made. So so you're saying if you could do it again, you you would? Yeah, absolutely. I'd still do it, you know, because I learned so much. Okay. About so those years in people, Wall Street was, wasn't they weren't wasted. for not. Okay. Oh, they definitely weren't wasted, you know. Okay. Um, but big difference. Big difference. I actually burnt out, and this is how the day was. Me and the owner, we used to open up the firm at 7, and uh, I picked up the phone, <clears throat> hung it up. Picked up the phone again. Client came on. I went, ah. hung up the phone. I pushed myself back from the desk, put my little French cuffs on, you know, put my tie on, got to put my jacket on, look. I said, hey, Mike, I'm out. Never looked back. What did Mike say? <laughs> where, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean, Mike? Yeah. What do you mean, Mike? You boy? Yeah, oh gosh! Yeah, 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 Mike Murphy. You know, shout out to Mike Murphy. You know, awesome, wow. awesome, awesome dude on Wall Street. Still, uh, great guy. Um, but yeah, he was like, "Look, you said take a week off. You know, come back, put you some guys. You'll be good to go." I was like, "Mike, I'm done." He said, "You're one of the best account openers in the firm." I said, "I'm done." He said, "Look, take the American Express, go backpack across Europe for a month." Come back. Wow. I'll put you in with, with, with a team, you know, give you 10 guys under you. We'll, we'll do a deal. You'll be good to go. I said, Mike. He told you that? I said, Dude, I he gave, he offered you done. the American Express, the oh, Amex yeah. in a month? Oh, yeah. With, with a team when you come back, Mike? Absolutely. Yeah. People you know? listening right now are going, you crazy. You're like, why you let that go? Well, you know something? All money ain't good money. That's true. I mean, I feel like money. I feel like, man. Look, you could have took the vacation, still came back, and then be like, Nah, man, I still think I got. Go. <laughs> nah, but you know something? It's just you know I'd rather have myself because when you're on Wall Street, or a lot yeah, of people yeah. that are on Wall Street, it's a grind, and you're working, you know, and your only good is your last sale, you know, just like everything yeah. else, you know. But at the same point in time, you know, your time 
and your loved ones. And I had to take a lot of time from my family to be the producing giant that I was. But your time yeah, and your man. loved ones, you can't get them back. And nah, gone. Man. Those are the two most important things in the world. So I didn't want to give it up anymore. So how, how's real estate made that different for <clears throat> you where you can actually still keep the money and make the money to provide for your family, but you mm-hmm. actually have time with your family? Well, like, the good thing about real estate is that I don't really do it for the money. I do it to help people. You know? Beautiful because thing. The more people you help, the more money you make. But how are you not being burnt out doing 18 hours? That's what I'm saying. Like, mm-hmm. so I, I imagine even though that might not be why you're doing it, but mm-hmm. I imagine you still do make good money to take care of your family. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Absolutely. So Absolutely. that being said, some, sometimes the thought process could be, hey, well, to make good money, I have to sacrifice time with my family. I got to be putting in 18 hour days and, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, in the beginning, in the beginning, you know, um, you got to put the time in. Even being an 18 year veteran, I'm still putting time in, but at the same point, they're not 18 hour days though. Sometimes there are. Okay. Sometimes they they, they actually are. But I can actually, my wife will drive me to a showing. You know, Mm -hmm. I can be on vacation and still be on my phone working. Okay. Yeah. Satellite. Yeah. So so it's a whole lot different. I can call a couple of people I know to go do showings for me. You know, I have uh, a great admin staff at Coldwell Banker. You know, our manager. Shout uh, out to Cola. Amen to that. You know, North Haven, North Haven, CB uh-huh. North Haven. Um, yeah, it works. It, it works. Now you have control of your life. You know, you actually. If I don't want to work, I don't have to work. You know. So what's the like? Because a lot of friends of mine that I talk to, you know, they're either into real estate um, in some degree, whether they're going to get their license, be a real estate agent. Um, I just found out, is there something different, a difference between a real estate agent and then a realtor? Well, no, the two, the two different words, they mean the same thing. But um, a realtor, though, is something that is like another type of license or something. You know, is somewhere, somewhere I, I heard like there's, once you become a realtor, there's, I don't know, something that you're able to do more than just. No, that's just a play on word. A realtor oh? and a real estate agent are one and the same. It's okay. Just, but there's no such thing as a realtor. That's what people say, realtor. There's no I in realtor, R E A L T. Realtor. That's how you know. The realtor. They're not in the business. The real- <laughs> hey man, I'm one of the best realtors. Man. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Best You're realtors not. out here because I keep it real. <laughs> nah. Uh, okay. But no, so- they're, they're they're the same, you know. Um, but you need a license. I think I know what you you're, you're getting at. Some people think that you have to have a special license to do commercial real estate. Okay. There's residential real All estate right. and then there's commercial real estate. Okay. You don't need a special license, but there are special designations that you can get to actually understand the real process of how to get a real transaction done in the commercial world. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's just self um, professional development, let's call it. Okay. That's another thing. A lot of people get into this business and it's about money, which is the wrong thing. But when you start, really understanding your role and mm. why you're here because we're all here to service. Like, what do you do? You service people. You know? yeah, yeah. You're here to serve and help people move in a certain direction. Yeah. That's going to have a positive effect on their life. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. We're just in two different fields. So for me to actually be at my best and help serve the best way I can, I need to keep doing professional development. I need to keep learning. I need to master my field yeah. so I can give you the absolute truth. And that's keeping it real, you know? You know, mm-hmm. it's not out here to trick somebody or talk somebody into doing something. You know, I'd rather speak to you in a positive manner and give you all of the data so you can make an educated decision on how you want to pull the trigger or not. But one thing's for sure all realtors should understand this. No matter how much money is on the table, you should be able to walk away from any deal at any time, no matter how much money you're leaving behind, if it's the right thing to do for your client. That's and so you're for for you, those are you the 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 person that is also not just, you know, in the in the business of helping people find homes or helping people sell homes, mm-hmm. but like do you also do like mentoring or or 
helping train other people who want to become real estate agents themselves? Absolutely, absolutely. I don't officially have a mentoring. Uh, I don't mentor in my company and get paid mm. for it because it's from my heart. Okay. But I do absolutely mentor a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, whether they're, you know, first year agents or, you know, five, 10 year agents. I actually have a team and um, I usually get all first year agents because they haven't learned the wrong way yet. You see? Ah, okay. See, like, before they get tainted. When they get tainted. <laughs> we don't want you agents getting tainted out there. Go yeah. see Mike. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're more um, responsive and they're, they have a, more of a drive to want to learn. Yes. You know? And if I they haven't already been set in their way, they haven't yeah. even developed a way yet. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and uh, when they learn how to actually get it done, yeah, you know, they put their own spin on it. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I just want to give everybody the the right information and let them take it from there. Yeah, I feel like it's probably. I mean, I don't know. I'll just speak for myself. Sometimes I think a bit apprehensive when it comes to like dealing with real estate agents um, or just even sometimes just like paying attention to like the feelings that kind of are evoked when I even just hear the word. I think sometimes because of the very bad examples mm -hmm. is that it almost has like sometimes the same like negative connotation that like car salesman has. Like when you hear that, oh yeah, you know what I mean? You feel like, you know, I'm not going to probably get what's best for me and my family I'm probably going to be told or, you know, given whatever paperwork or something's put in front of me for what's best for this, this, this agent is because, you know, they want to, you know, make sure that their commission is whatever, or they yeah. want to just sell this, you know, property. I There's mean, a lot of people like that. A lot of people like me that, that think that have that worry. And you should. Right. But there's a lot of agents like that as well. Yeah. And that's why I do what I do because for example, I just got a client. We just closed. Shout out to her, Miss Shonda Brogdon. She uh -huh. did a great job. Um, had a client that came from another realtor where the realtor made a deal behind the client's back on her behalf when the client told her realtor she did not want this property. Mm -hmm. The person made the deal anyway and, and told her she messed the deal up told the buyer she messed the deal up when the mm. buyer told her, I want no parts of this deal. She called the agent and made the deal happen. And uh, so the client had to back up out of it and fired her. And that's how she came to me. Mm. Um, yeah. So I know, and I'm, I, I've only been thinking about that lately a lot more because my, you know, wife and I, um, our growing family, we just had our, so I told you, I, I had three kids when we got married already. Um, and, uh, we just had our first kid together, so we have we have five kids total between the two of us. One kid together, the five month old, um, and you know, so the the apartment's getting a little uh, a little small, a little small, um, and you know what I mean. We we're in like this major transition, you know, multiple transitions too, with you know a combination of my health. You know, we had a big. I had a big major health uh, crisis at the end of the last year going into this year. Then I had the big, you know, just financial change in the household with me, you know, after the whole health thing, uh, deciding to not go back to the nine to five and, you know, be a full time content creator. So there's that big right. financial transition, right. you know. So we're kind of in the really kind of hot box of these transitions you know kind of mm -hmm. waiting for some you know s stability to kind of settle in i think you know more so on the finance side because it's kind of you know kind of really you know largely lopsided right now um while we continue to just grow the, the business here so but with that being said it's definitely you know on our mind we're always like looking online for information we're always looking up different you know real estate process just you know keeping mm -hmm. the, the dream alive right, you know, keeping right, it, you know right. we're we're definitely uh big vision board right. people do you, do you and your wife like ever have ever done that like you know uh do like vision board types of stuff some people it's not an um, actual bona fide well, board but you like you know something um i have yeah you know um but a lot of stuff and this is just how I, I learned how to move and shake. A lot of stuff 
is in my head and I just know yeah, how yeah. to access it. Yeah. You know, now I do have a board in my home office where I write a lot of stuff down. Yeah. But I actually sit there for two, three hours sometimes just thinking about my business and how can I affect it in a more yeah. positive manner, how I can help people, who needs what. And I'll actually meditate on that for two or three hours. Wow. You know? Um, and a lot of times it's not on purpose. Mm. My wife will come in, a, in the house and what are you, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Snap out of it, yeah. Mike. I'm just, I'm sitting there. I'm just, you know, going over yeah, yeah. things in my head and I'm planning and I'm, and I'm, you know, going through conversations I may need to have five yeah. different ways. and <laughs> Five different five ways. Five different ways, you know, because you, yeah, yeah. you got to have five different moves. One, yeah. two, and three plan. The third plan may, hey. may still fail. It's, that's you know, a fact. You gotta have five. You gotta have five you, levels you gotta, deep. Look, baby. if you stay ready, you gotta. You never gotta get ready. You never have to get ready. Come on, Ray. <laughs> Come on, Ray Barnes. <laughs> Shout out to Barnes. All right. So, I, I'm. What's really intri intrigues me about anybody that says though to me that they're doing something to help people. Right. What always intrigues <laughs> me about that is because I know there's countless people who are not. Correct. Right. So I'm always interested in. How and what makes you different? Like what? Mm -hmm. Why not you too? Then, like, like the countless sure. other people that are just you know, like what? What's? Where does that come from? That thing inside you that even like has the desire to? I want to have helping people at the helm. Mm -hmm. Like, was that from you know whether it's growing up a, a person that was like that in your life as a you know mentor or a Absolutely relative or? Not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where did so where does it come from? It, uh, was it just through osmosis or like you know something? No. one of those things again that you can't explain? Like I, like that ten year old who already is thinking about a contingency plan? Yeah, I don't know where that came <laughs> from from that guy, but yeah. I can tell you where this comes from. Okay, okay? Um, my first two years on Wall Street, I spent every dime. I spent every dime. My first check for ten thousand dollars, I spent it in three days. What you spend it on? Nothing. Uh, I want to know absolutely nothing. No, no, no. I want to know about all the nothing you spent it on, though. You know, going out, hanging out, In clothes, days? clothes, giving people money like I was rich. You know, dumb stuff. You know. Oh my Eating. gosh! Listen, listen. Not that this was necessarily you, but when you just mentioned <laughs> eating, it it struck a, a a personal nerve in me. I don't know what it is about. Hey, maybe it's the same for black folk and white folk or any kind of folk. But for me, growing up, not having much uh, in the specific way of food all the time. Right. Like us who grew up in inner city communities with food insecurities. It is something about when we get money, okay. we want to eat. We want to spend it on oh, yeah. eating. Oh, like yeah. we could blow some money Quick, on food. Quickly. On quickly. just food. Yeah, absolutely. I'm to, like, and it's to this day, it, probably because my wife is a social worker, you know, I've, you know, worked in, you know, behavior, health, human service. So, I, you know, I know these things. I know about myself personally when I'm like just doing my self analysis, like just, I like to know why I think and tick and feel the way I feel and think and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I do that kind of meditation of myself. Uh, some people think that's weird, but I think it's healthy. Um, but I think even present day, today, one of the moments, even as an adult man, that I'm most emotionally feeling happy or, or just, you know, euphoria is right after we come home from going grocery shopping. It's something about opening the refrigerator to a full refrigerator that I know I could go in that refrigerator anytime I want and get me something to eat. Like Look. it's something that still make that little boy inside of me excited about grocery shopping day. Even though we were poor, I never remember ever going hungry. You know, I mean, we had the you know peanut butter and butter sandwiches. Yep, that's a know, fact. Butter and syrup. Grandma made it know, work somehow. You know, government cheese. You know, but uh -huh. I never remember ever going hungry. However, it's a blessing to be able to full fill up your refrigerator because guess what? You've got kids. Yes. They don't understand going to the refrigerator and nothing's yes. there. Yes. You know. Absolutely. And as a man, 
I think it makes you feel proud to be able to provide for your family. Where they yes. Don't, they don't have to worry about at least that. At least that. Yeah. You know? I don't yeah. think anybody should be hungry. No, nah, no. Nah. Which is what, you know, yeah. Nah. See, I'm not going to let you do it, Mike. You're not going to get me all emotional. Anyways. So, yeah. So, the 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 real estate thing is what you're doing full-time, present day. Yes. Um, when when did that become the full time thing, like or the only thing? Uh, truthfully speaking, when I left Wall Street, I didn't do anything for six months but sleep, go to events, <laughs> eat, <laughs> do some know. more eating. Yeah, and then realized, yeah, I got to do something. Okay, you know, um, right then. Oh wow! I went right into it. But I told you the first few years I waited. So you're not everything. new to this. You're true to this. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I ain't new to this. Stay ready. True to this. Stay ready. I've been trio. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no, Mike. But if you're going to do something, why not go all the way? So check this out. There's countless excuses people give Mike about why not to go all the way, man. You kidding me? Check this out, though. Check this out, okay? So when we get, when you're young and you know, you're, you're hanging out with your boys, you know, uh, you want to date the girl, you want to go to the club, you know, you go all the way, right? Yeah. You you you, you go get yeah, it, yeah. right? Okay. Right now, every day, all this. Sometimes you don't pay your bills, you can get the outfit, so you can go so to the club and kick it. You right? already know. Right, you get the uni, right? <laughs> so if you're going to go all the way for something that's not going to benefit you and your future and your yeah. family, yeah. why not go all the way for something that's going to benefit you, your family, and your future? If you hustle hard out there, hustle hard over here. I think it's because people don't believe that it's going to pan out, man. But you know something? There's no sense That's what it is. as being a little pregnant. There ain't no such thing as a halfway crook. You in or you out. Dude said it ain't no such thing as halfway pregnant. <laughs> That's a, a little, word right there. Let that be a little pregnant. Let that sink in, y'all. Because some of y'all need to give birth <laughs> to that vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preaching now. I'm, I'm sure I stole that from somewhere. Somewhere I saw that. It's okay. But anyways, it works. It works. That's a fact, man. It's true. It's true. Nah, man. Ain't no such thing as halfway pregnant or staying pregnant. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, you know what I mean? Birth. You Either you're going to give birth or the C-section got to come in. Yeah. With the blade. Right? That 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 tribulation. Mm -hmm. some, some, sometimes people giving birth through the catalyst of, of, of tribulation. So you did all that work for nothing. You know? Mm. All that work for nothing. Uh. Dang. Nah, but people got out. countless reasons why they're not, man. It's mm -hmm. it's either I'm I'm I don't I'm not convinced that it's gonna pan out. Or I tell you another one, you know, hey, why why jump f full in to something that I haven't done before that maybe I'm 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 scared or don't know how it's gonna work out, rather than stay with right here where I'm at. That's mm -hmm. That's at least consistent. I could bank on it, right? You right. know, even though you could, they could even tell themselves, looking themselves in the mirror, and they know it's not enough, though. True, but not enough. Not enough is 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 many times better for people because I'm familiar with not enough. I don't think it's and, better, and, but and, it's comfortable. What, what, that's what they, that's what I mean. It, to them, mm -hmm. it's it's better. It's more comfortable. I'll stay with not enough, not having enough, mm -hmm. because it's familiar. Right. Versus versus leaping towards what could be far beyond my wildest dreams, but it's unfamiliar. True. And I think it comes down to the person itself. Because if I stay here. And it's not enough. And I know it's not enough. And I know it will never be enough. And then guess what? I got my brother Joe. I got my sister's auntie's cousin over here that's telling me it's never going to work out. So my circle don't believe in me. You know? So they're pushing the disbelief that I have in me. And guess what? You got a job. Don't worry about it. It'll, it it's, it's okay. But that's not me. So those people don't yeah. have the right to complain. Nah. How can you complain about not having enough? Yeah. If you don't want to make it enough, you know, like on Friday, make it enough. Make it enough. Make it enough. 
Okay. <laughs> you gotta go make it enough, you know. Go make it enough. You, know? you yeah. gotta go get it. You know, if I'm uncomfortable and unhappy and I'm not making enough money to make ends meet, look, that's very, very uncomfortable. If I see my baby girl go to the refrigerator yeah. and she open it up and say, um, we need milk. That's very uncomfortable for me. Yeah, okay. man. So I think it just comes down to the person. And everybody yeah. gets it at different times now. There's nothing wrong with yeah, yeah. not knowing. Okay. Yeah. But if you want something different, you got to do something different. I like that. I like everybody that. Everybody gets it at different times. On the Free Lunch Podcast, we like to wrap up and get at the end of each show. Um I go through these, what we call the three Fs, faith, family, and finance, okay. to see what are, what are the things um, that you're learning these days in each of those areas. Um, so whether it's faith, faith could be, you know, speaking spiritually mm -hmm. um, or faith in yourself. Uh, and then obviously the other two are self-explanatory, family and finance. So we'll start with faith. Mm -hmm. These days, what, what's something that you're learning new in the area of faith? Well, I'm not sure if it's What'd new or not, but I'm paying more attention to it. Okay. Is that I don't need anything else or anybody else but God. I don't need anything or anybody else but God. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, somebody. That's that's number one. That's number one number in my one. life. Okay. These days in the area of family, you learning anything new these days in that area? I really, really enjoy. I'd rather be sitting home with my family and making sure that they're taken care of. And every day I get to see a smile on their face or get to put that smile there, it just makes me feel more of a man. Mm, I love that. Finance. Finance. Whew. Mr. Mr. Wall Street turn real estate guru. What's, what, what are we learning in these days of finance? What's, what's the, the biggest lesson okay. we're learning in finance these days? First of all, um, money, it's just an object, a tool that's used at times for people to make themselves feel better than other people, okay? Mm. That's what it is, okay? But we need it to live, but you shouldn't live to need it. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, you can only buy so many things. Yep. Right? Chasing money. Mm-hmm. Don't chase money. Mm -mm -mm. It's a word right there. Uh, I think that might have to be. I might. I, that might end up being the title of this episode or something. I don't know. Yeah, you're the content. I don't creator. know. I know. <laughs> I get to be tasked with that fun idea. Yeah, I'm excited okay. to see what you come up with. So, um, like free lunch, like the way lunch edifies the body. Amen. This is free lunch, free food for the soul. So you gotta leave the people with something like lunch edifies the body, give them something to edify the soul. What's the one-liner from all we talked about today or something that maybe we didn't talk about that may pop into your head, something new? What is something that you want to leave the audience with? Well, don't believe in yourself. Know yourself and know that you can do whatever you want to do. Oh, hold on. Oh, you messed me up with that one, Mike. You said don't. He said don't believe in yourself. Mm -mm. Know yourself. That's a bar. That's a bar, Mike. Hey, that's the one. I'm, I'm, I'm trademarking it. Bro. This the viral clip right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling it right now. Don't. Because if you believe, don't believe in, in yourself. Right? That's another shirt, man. I'm Would still. Would you rather that. believe it or know it? Wow. If you believe it, there's room for doubt. If you know it. Now you can believe in the plan you put forth into achieving what you already know. I got nothing, y'all. I can't. I don't even got a follow up for that. That's fire, bro. And it's, I'm taking that one. Now nah, I'm taking it's, that. It's from I'm up taking there, that. man. It's Great. From up there. And since I got that on record, since he said it's not from him, actually, he can't. He can't. He <laughs> can't, can't bring it. litigation against. Can't against claim it now, right? He can't claim it now. Y'all heard him. <laughs> I just want a piece. I don't want to know. I just want a little piece. That's all. We can work it together. I love it. Don't believe in yourself. Know yourself. I'm bugging right now. Oh, I'm going I'm to chew on that one for a minute. I think the t-shirt should be coming. Yeah. You 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 struck something to me. We, we're going to do a t-shirt. Nah, yeah, 50 -50 man. 50-50 on that. 
That's crazy. You heard bro. it right here on free lunch, but that ain't gonna be free. <laughs> <laughs> It's F R I I, not F R E E. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, man, for just taking time from your your schedule, your work, your family to come and chop it up with me, man. I appreciate you so much. It absolutely was Eddie. Thank you so much, Eddie, for sending this dude my Shout way. Shout out to Eddie, man. Shout man. out to Eddie, man. Um, yeah, man. People listening, you guys, yo, you gotta continue to surround yourself around like minded individuals, people that. Um, not necessarily people that have already made it somewhere or been successful. I wouldn't even limit yourself like that. Surround yourself with people who just have a desire like you desire. They have that just drive. They don't got to be people that have already been successful or been there, done that or whatever. But if you can surround yourself with people that are like-minded individuals who are trying to accomplish better for themselves, for their lives, um, I think it gets you one step closer to realizing that for yourself, man. But thank you again. Before we leave, you got to let the people know where they can get in touch with you, whether that's a website, social media. Amen to that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael Stroud, <clears throat> Stroud Realty Group, LLC. But I'm at Coldwell Banker in North Haven. My telephone number is 203-821-1131. You can reach out to me at StroudMichael1, just the number one, at gmail.com or Michael.stroud at cbrealty.com. 24 hours a day. Here I go. Awesome, man. Make sure you guys look in the description of this episode. We'll have a hyperlink right there for you to just click on um, and connect with Mike here so you don't got to worry about memorizing all the blurb he just said, all the drops he just gave you. But again, we appreciate you for coming through, man. Uh, Give us, give us, give us, us, us listening, man. Give us a, a, a another, another gem, but give us a real estate gem, yo. For mm -hmm. those of us, when we, because a bunch of people were trying to, trying to look for a home or sell a home. You mm -hmm. can pick for whichever one. Just give, give us a gem. Okay. Well, you know something? First of all. What should, what should we be, we be looking for? We look at, when we looking at the agent. How about that? I was going to say. For agent. Find the agent that's going to serve you. Ask them questions. Ask questions. Right don't that. sign a contract right away. Understand who they are, how they are, and remember, agents are working for you. You don't work for them. This this what he really mean, y'all. Uh, write that number down that he just told you a second ago. <laughs> That's the number one thing you want to look for is go back to this episode. Rewind <laughs> to that part. Yo, Thank you so much again, man. Appreciate you for coming through. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Hey, man. it's free lunch, y'all. Free food for your soul. Peace. Peace out. Peace out.